Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. It's been a little while since we've seen a single slot low profile GPU hit the market, but today we're going to be taking a look at a brand new one. This is the Sparkle Eco Arc A310 and it's a low power single slot low profile card. And you know, when it comes to these low profiles, we've only got a couple of choices. You know, if you want to do a little bit of gaming, the GT 1030, which is definitely getting dated and the Radeon RX 6400. So I'm actually really glad to get my hands on a new low profile single slot card. So obviously what we've got here for super small form factor. Now you could definitely add this to a larger PC if you wanted to. Doesn't require any extra power. Total board power here for the overall GPU itself, 50 watts. But while you're running at the stock clocks, this thing's only going to pull about 32 watts. Like most of these single slots, we've got four gigabytes of VRAM here, and it's based on Intel Arc. It's the A310. We do have a little bit of tweaking and tuning that we can do from the Intel Arc Control Center, and I'll show you that once we get into it. And when it comes to outputting video from this card, we've got HDMI and two mini display ports. So they wanted to keep this really small, but we've got three displays out of the A310 here. Not too bad. It is PCIe 8X 4.0, and the other specs are as follows. Over on the Sparkle website, it states that the GPU clock is 1000 megahertz, but this boosts way over. It's actually double what we're looking at here, and we'll get into Windows. I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. This has six XE cores, six ray tracing units, 96 Intel XMX engines, and 96 XE vector engines. We've also got four gigabytes of GDDR6. Again, it's PCIe 4.0, 8X, and total board power is 50 watts, but when you're running this, you're only going to see a power draw of around 32 to 34 at the stock power limit. So I've recently been on the hunt for a single slot low profile card specifically for this MS01 from Minus Forum. I love this little workstation PC. And as soon as I open it up, you'll see we do have a PCIe X16 slot. Really only enough room for a single slot low profile card. And this A310 fits right in here perfectly. Now when they initially announced the MS01, they did show off a video with an A2000, but it was a modified A2000 from NVIDIA with an aftermarket single slot cooler. I'm in the market for one of those. I'd love to put that card in here, but until then, I was looking for something to kind of get me by, and the Sparkle Eco A310 is only coming in at around $99. Fits perfectly in this little setup, and I know the CPU here, we've got more than enough power. I've got the 13th Gen i9 version of the MS01. And I'm really hoping to see some decent gaming performance. Now, I personally have not tested the A310. I've tested most of the other ARC cards on the market right now. This is coming in as one of their lower end versions. But at $99, if you're in a pinch for a small form factor, low profile, single slot card, it might work out. All right, so first things first, we've got this card in the super small form factor MS01 from Minus Forum. There are a couple different variants. But this one here happens to have the Intel i9-13900H. I've got 32 gigs of DDR5 running at 5200 megahertz. And of course, we're going to be using this Intel Arc A310 low profile. Only 4 gigs of VRAM. And what I've noticed here is with a lot of these games, it is digging into the system memory, which will hurt performance. Because a lot of these newer games do need more than 4 gigs of VRAM. Fully up to date here uh, with the Intel Arc drivers. And luckily, since we've got a desktop variant, we can actually do a little bit of tuning here. So basically, what you're really going to want to do with this little card here is just give it a little more. I've been messing around with the settings. GPU performance boost, I've just gone up to 50. And I've taken the GPU voltage offset up just a little bit to help out that performance boost. Now, you really will have to kind of experiment with this because all cards are going to be different. All systems are going to be different. There's a chance you could go a bit higher with this with no GPU voltage offset, but uh, you really got to kind of just mess around with it, see what's stable, what's not. But luckily, we do have this option here to get a little more out of the A310. I'm going to run Furmar. This is going to stress that GPU out for us. And as you can see right here, our GPU clock is at 2,350 megahertz. So that's well over the advertised 1,000 megahertz. And even without changing the settings in Arc Control Panel, it's still boosted up to 2350. And really, we're up to 38.4 because we've done a little bit of that offset, a little bit of performance boost. This is normally around 32 watts just across the board if you're not using any kind of tweaking or tuning with this card itself. So yeah, there is a little more that we can get out of this. And the first thing I wanted to show off were some benchmarks that I ran on this system. 
3D Mark Night Raid 27,404, and this one here isn't looking as good as I thought it would be. I mean, it's kind of right on par with the 780M iGPU. But moving over to Fire Strike, started to look a little better, coming in with an 8,037. Still pretty low in terms of running this benchmark on a dedicated GPU in 2024, but it's a really cheap, low profile single slot GPU. And the final benchmark we have here is Time Spy with a 3,722. Was hoping to see a little better performance in these synthetic benchmarks, but that's what they are. They're synthetic. Now it's time to move over to some real world gaming and see how this A310 really performs. First one on the list is Forza Horizon 5, and that's because it's definitely an easier game to run on these lower end GPUs. We're at 1080p medium with no XESS. Now we could also add FSR if you wanted to, or go with Intel's XESS. We didn't need any scaling here at medium 1080p. And if you take a look at Afterburner up in the top left hand corner, you can see that GPU memory is at five gigs. We are digging into system memory right now. Remember, this A310 only has four gigs of GDDR6. Next up, we've got Doom Eternal, really great performance, medium 1080p, 100% resolution scale, definitely over 60. We had an average of 74 FPS by the end of this run here. I mean, it's really playable. But again, this is a little bit of an older one and one that's pretty easy to run on these systems. So I expected we'd see some playable performance here. It definitely is. I also wanted to test Shadow of the Tomb Raider, so I just used the built-in benchmark here. 1080p medium, and I do have XESS set to performance. This didn't fare as well as I thought it would, because uh, by the end of this run, we only had an average of 63. Now we are over that 60 hump, but it would have been nice to be up in the 70s or 80s with a little card like this. GTA 5 is one that I still go back to for single player. I did some multiplayer for a while, but I wanted to test it here. And at 1080 high, we had an average of 134 FPS. Looking like these older games are going to run really well on the A310. So, I mean, we've got a lot of games that are going to be totally playable on this card. And given $99 price tag for a new card that'll fit these small form factor PCs, looking pretty decent so far. Not top the line by any means, but Mortal Kombat 1 did much better than I thought it would. Medium, 1080p, XESS is set to balance. Now without XESS on, this is around 42 FPS with just the medium 1080p, so having that resolution scale really helps out with this, but the fighting games that I've tested so far do work well on the ARC A310. Pal World was one that I didn't think was going to perform that well. Now unfortunately we don't have access to FSR or XESS yet in the game without any modification, so I did have to drop this down to 900p low. We got an average of 61 FPS and you will see it drop down below 60. But for the most part, I mean, we're over that hump there and it's not too bad. If you're in a pinch, you could definitely get by, but we've still got some resolution we could take down. You could always go down to 720 on a card like this. And the final game I wanted to test was Cyberpunk 2077. So at 1080 low with XESS set to performance, you can get an average of around 61. I wanted a little more out of it, so I went down to 900p low with XESS set to balance, and we got an average of 71 FPS. Given the state of ARC and this game here, I think this is some pretty decent performance given that we're working with a low-powered Intel GPU. And Intel is constantly updating these drivers, so uh, just a couple weeks ago I can guarantee you that the A310 was not performing like it is here in Cyberpunk 2077, but with those later ARC drivers or those newer ARC drivers, we're seeing playable performance at 900p. Going into this with the Sparkle A310, I knew we weren't gonna see 4K performance out of this card, and that's not what I was going for. It's a $99 low profile single slot card that can play some games pretty decently at 1080. Some of the newer stuff you might wanna drop down to 900p, but given the limited availability of the single slot low profile cards for a small form factor PC like the MS-01, this could be a good choice to get by until you can find something else. Now, one thing I mentioned at the beginning, the low profile single slot cooler for the A2000, and they're out there, but uh, the price on them is pretty high, a little hard to get. Soon as I can get one, I will be putting one inside of this PC here. But for now, I think I could stick to the A310 and have a pretty decent time with the MS-01.
But that's going to wrap it up for this video. I will have at least one more coming up with the ARC A310. I do think we can get a little more out of this when we pair it up with a different kind of system, and I'll talk about more of that in the next video. But if you're interested in learning a little more, I will leave some links down below. You can pick this up over on Amazon. I believe Newegg also has it. And if you want to see anything else in the next video with this graphics card, let me know in the comments below. But that's it for this one. Like always, thanks for watching.